Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Steven. So if you are watching this video and then you've not subscribed to my YouTube channel, kindly hit uh, the subscribe button. All right, so today we are going to be looking at five unpopular hooks you need to know in React GX. So if you are a React developer or you are just about to start learning React GX or you just um, you, you are a software engineer and then you really want to know more about uh, React uh, GS. So then this video is for you. So what I'm going to be sharing today are five unpopular hooks you need to know in React GS. So uh, we have the popular ones, the use state, uh, we have the um, use effects. So those are the popular ones that we use in our projects. But the one I'm going to be sharing today, they are uh, it's, it's likely you might not even use some of these uh, hooks in your projects, but they are very, very important because it's going to help you, it's going to optimize um, your your project when you use some of these hooks I'm going to be sharing today. So, um, yeah, so without any further ado, let's just get started. So the first one I'm going to be sharing today is use imperative handle. So the method I'm going to be using for this particular tutorial, right, is that I'm going to explain the theory first, and then I'm going to show us how you can do this in your, I mean, how you can use these hooks in your code, right? Um, if you, the practical aspect of it, how you can implement it, how you can uh, use these hooks in your project. So first, the first thing I will do, I'm going to explain it, and then I'm going to take us to where we can definitely use this as well. Okay. So now the first one is use imperative handle. So what does it does? It allows you to customize the behavior of a component when it is accessed by a parent component using a ref, right? So Think of it like this. Imagine you have a toy robot, right? Usually when you press the button on its remote control, it does predefined actions like move, like move forward or backward. So use imperative handle. It's like opening the remote control and reprogramming the buttons to make the robot do custom actions like dance or spin. So what does this mean is that, let's say you have a parent component and then you have a child component. So from the parent components, you can control uh, some actions, right, being performed by the child components. All right, so let me show us how this works. So let me just take us to the, the code base, right? So this is an uh, example of how you can use, use imperative handle. So the first thing you need to do is that you are, you are going to need use ref, right? <clears throat> And, get, and then you're going to need a forward ref as well. Then you need to import uh, this use imperative handle here. <coughs> Excuse me. So now, this is just a simple countdown, right? Let me show us how it works. If I click on start, so the countdown is going to start, right? And if I click on stop, it's going to stop here and then I can reset the countdown. So now let me quickly explain to us what's really happening here. So the first thing here is that we have this countdown timer is a child component while we have a parent component here this app here is a parent component so what happened is that we import the countdown timer right in our parent components and then we use use ref we define uh use ref here as you can see we define use ref here and then we pass this ref into this countdown timer and then the initialize time you see, you know, it is starting from 10 here. So let's say I want to make it to start from 20. I can as well increase it here. So you see, and then when I click on start here, what is going to happen is that the countdown is going to start. So I'm going to click on stop, right? Now, so let's now go into the child component and, I, and I, then let's see what is really happening there. Now we have this countdown timer. We, we use this forward ref, right? And then we uh, pass in the, these props and this ref parentheses here. So, and then we have these uh, use states that is taking the uh, initial time, right? And then we have this start timer function here that is helping us to start the time as well. So now this is what is happening here. We now defined a a function here, the stop timer, which help us to stop the time, and then we are using the the ref as well, the use ref to control what is happening, what should happen when we click on stop 
timer. Now here as well, we have the reset timer. Now look at where we are now using this use imperative and now. You know, usually if we want to, in our parents components here, right, we are defining this handle start here and we are defining this uh, handle stop here. Now, you know, usually if you want to do this, you need to pass this, uh, this function into your child components for this particular thing supposed to, I mean, for this action to be performed. If you really want to do it usually without use imperative now, what you just have to do is that you need to pass in this and do start and do stop and do reset in your child components. And then from your from the child components, you, you then can now use it to do anything you want to do. But with the help of this use imperative, we don't need to pass this function inside our countdown timer, which is the child component. So with just use ref, right? Now look at it here. What is happening is that we said this. Uh, use imperative and then we pass this ref. You know, this ref is being is being passed from our um, parent component from this app, and then we are receiving it. We are receiving this ref here inside our countdown timer with a child component, and then we now use use imperative, right? So make reference. Okay, what should happen? Start. Then we uh, say the start timer, right? Then the stop, we say the stop timer, and then the reset, we say the reset timer. All these guys are all functions. You see start timers, and then we have the stop timer here, and then the reset timer here, we also have it as well. And then we now say that inside our parents components, we now say the undo start should do what? Should start, right? Because that is what we set it here. We say the start timer should start, then we say the stop timer should stop, and then what is happening here is that we are now calling, we are now using that use ref, right? To say anytime they click on the and start, I mean they click on the start button, what should happen is the timer should start, right? And then the and stop should stop and the reset should reset with the help of this use imperative. So we don't need to uh, unnecessarily pass some props. You know, passing props from parents to um, our child component. There are some things that can be done with the help of use ref and with the help of this use imperative handle. You don't need to pass some actions. You don't need to pass some functions into your child components. You can easily handle it this way. So, yeah, that is how um, use imperative handle works. I hope I've been able to explain uh, what this does. But let me just make a recap, right? So here we have uh, a countdown timer with a child component, and then this app here, this app component is our parent component. So it is, we define these three buttons, the start, stop, reset buttons inside our parent component, which is the app, right? Now we now define all these undo start, undo stop, undo reset. They are all functions inside our parent. We usually what we should have done is that we should have just passed these uh, functions and passed it inside our countdown timer for us to be able to control the activities of what is going on in the countdown timer, which is a period, which is a child component to our app. But instead of us doing that, what we just do is just that we just pass the ref. Now, with the help of the ref, when we come into our child component, we receive the ref here. And then we are able to define some functions inside our child components. We now pass those functions, right? With the app of use imperative, we set those functions, this start timer to start, stop timer to stop. And then from our parent components, we can now make use of those uh, objects, those things we set in our use imperative handles. We can now make use of them and then control every activities of what is going on in our child components so if you have any questions or um anything you know maybe a, a kind of contribution that will make people to understand better just drop it in the comment section so i'll be there to uh if it's, if it's a question i'm going to be there to answer your question okay so the second one we're going to be talking about uh is use layout effects so that's the second one we're going to be talking about use layout effects so what it does it runs synchronously after all done, the structure of your web page changes. This means that it's run at a specific time to make sure everything on the screen is set up uh, properly. So this works like use effect. It's similar to use effect, the way use effect works. So this use layout effect is similar to how use effect works. So think of it like this. Imagine you are setting up a stage for a play. 
It's like checking and adjusting the props and scenery right after they are placed but before the audience sees them ensuring everything looks perfect yes so what does it mean is that now when immediately your dom changes like this the structure of your web page changes so it makes everything arranged maybe you want to perform an action uh before the before your user the user of that particular web page sees what is going on this use if layout uh, effects we is going to trigger Right, you know, just like use effects, you know, use effects. Let's say, for example, you want to make a changes on your web page, or you want to call an endpoint. Uh, uh, maybe you want to make a kind of get request, and then what you are calling from that from that endpoint, you want to display it to the user immediately. They land on your web page. You can use use effects. So this also work similar to use effects, right? So enough of talk. Let me show us how this works. Okay, so um, let's come here. Okay, so yeah, so this is let me make this bigger here and then this text is not showing very well let me make it white so that we can see what is really going on here uh, let me just use an inline style okay so let's say color now let's just set it to white uh, this should be a string here uh, white okay so we can see so that we can see what is really going on here so now <clears throat> this is a box here this is a div we give this div and height right of uh, 100 pixel so uh, what i'm just trying to display here is that when if i click on this restart here so immediately this web page landed the the information i want to show to the user how i was able to display it so i want to show the user uh, the size the height of this particular box here which is 100 pixel so with the help of use layout effect i was able to do that so this happens before uh, the immediately the DOM changes, right? Immediately uh, any part of my application changes, this use layout effects will trigger at the background. So let me show us this code. Let me explain what is going on here. So we have uh, everything is happening inside this our uh, app component. So what you just have to do is just um, you have to import this use layout effect, and then I'm using use ref as well here. So for me to be able to get the height of the box. So here what I'm doing is just um, I, I define the ref here, right? And then uh okay, yeah, I'm defining the ref here. Sorry, this diff ref, I'm defining it here, and then I'm passing the ref inside this div for me to be able to access the uh the DOM elements, right? So we I have the star here, the box as 100 pixel as you can see. That is the height of the box, and then what I'm doing here is that i am getting look at this use layout here now so i define the state the height and the set height and then i am getting the uh current height of this particular box here so that's what i'm trying to do here so uh i'm using this use layout effect right so even if you over on it you can see it said the signature is identical to use effect as i've said it said it fires synchronously and after all dumb mutations so it says use this to read layout from the DOM and synchronously re-rendered. Update schedule inside use layout will be flushed synchronously before the browse before the browser has the chance to paint. That is before the browser has the chance to display it to the user. Right? Before it has the chance to display it to the user, this use layout effect is going to trigger. So that's what we are simply trying to do here as well. So we are just trying to get the eye. So this is how you can use it. Yeah, use layout effect in your project so let me make a recap of what i just explained now so what does use layout effect does it helps us to uh it perform uh synchronously right so before the browser show the user um your layout i mean your web page or your the any fixtures or your, or your or your website so this use layout effect is going to trigger right it's similar to what use effect does so if you have any question relating to this, just simply drop your question in the comment section. I'll be there to answer. So let's move to the third one. So the third one is use deferred value. Use deferred. I so much love this. This use deferred values. So now what, what it does, it delays updating a value until the system is ready to keep your app responsive and smooth. Okay, so think of it like this. Imagine you are at busy restaurants and instead of rushing all the others at once, the chef waits until they have a moment to prepare each dish properly. 
It's like the chef making sure updates happen smoothly without overwhelming the system. Let me let me say that again. He said, imagine you are at busy restaurants and instead of rushing all the other at once, you see, so the chef waits until they have a moment to prepare each dish properly. It's like the chef making the sure I'm uh, making sure updates happen smoothly without overwhelming the system. This particular hook is very, very important and is really really helpful. Now let me show us how it works. Right? So let's come here and then let's see here how it's we can make use of it so number one thing is that let's say for example you want to uh you want to you have you have a list of items let's say you have a table right you are getting the data let's say an order or you are building an e-commerce uh, platform and then you have a list of orders right and then you want to any anytime you want to get a particular order you want to make a, a search right maybe by using the order id or using the customer name right so and anytime the user type as they are trying to search for that particular customer name you want to be calling an api to make that uh, particular search for you so this is where this different uh, I mean use deferred value comes in because usually when if you use unchanged you know immediately you are changing anything on that particular um, on that particular input form that search form is going to be triggering is going to try to call the API at every type right at every change but what this use deferred value will do for us is that it can help us to delay now let's see what is happening here so now here we have um, okay let me show us here uh, then let me make this guy white again just like what I did the other time so uh, we have the color let's set it to white okay so now let's come here now just watch this console here any type I type something here let's say I typed um, welcome so you see sending api request for welcome now let me show you what is happening inside this code base i have so much love these hooks now here we have the search bar which which is a component and then we are trying to call we try to import this search bar if we import it in our parent components here now the whole thing is happening inside this our search bar so what we just do is just the way the number where you import your hooks in react so we import this use deferred value here right and then we have our use states and then we uh you know we initiate this uh use deferred value here all right so we are setting it here to this is the constant we are using and then it's taking this uh parameter here this timeout 500 milliseconds and what does it mean now look at it inside our use effects here what are we trying to do let's say we are calling an, an endpoint here right as you know i gave a scenario the other time like if you want to search for an order or you have a list of customers a lot of them like 500 or 600 thousands of customers so and then instead of you going through all of those you you might want to search for that particular customer name so and that is where this guy comes in now inside our use effects here let's say we have an api request that we are making here so and then we are now using this deferred query don't forget this deferred query is coming from here we are setting it here right and then we are now saying if it is not equals to nothing right we are making an api call so it is going to wait we are setting the time out so wait for a short delay before sending the api request right so this fetch data here that we this particular function here where we are calling our endpoints we are saying it should wait for 500 milliseconds before it's called the backend before we before we, um sorry before we call the end the end point, right so we are saying it should wait for 500 milliseconds right so instead of us to be immediately our input is changing instead of it to be making a api request on every chain in which this can slow down our application so imagine as if the user is typing at every type at every change you are making an endpoint immediately. I mean, you are calling an endpoint immediately. It's going to slow down our application. But with the help of this uh, use deferred value, it can help us. You can slow down. You can say, okay, after you can increase the time if you want, right? You can say if it's after, uh, well, I mean, if it's after 600 or 700 milliseconds, that is when you want to call an endpoint, right? So immediately the user stop typing, and after this 500 milliseconds. We are going to call the endpoint so that's what is happening here so let me come here and then let me say i'm typing something there again let me say uh i say welcome 
you see two so you see it's going to wait for 500 milliseconds before it's called the endpoints so that is what this particular i so much love this because uh it's really helpful and it's really help you to optimize your application so let me just quickly do a recap here right so we say this use deferred value what you just have to do you import it and after you import it let's say you want to uh you are making an api call you just use it this way that if you deferred query right is not equals to uh uh, an empty string right so you call your endpoint inside this particular place right you call it here and then here we are now saying that custom constant timeout id so we are setting the timeouts to after 500 right so and then once this once the after 500 milliseconds we are making a request to our endpoint so that is how this works so if you have any question in regards to this kindly drop your questions in the uh, comment section so if you are really really if you find this video very educative and helpful kindly hit the like button and if you haven't yet subscribed as well don't forget to hit the subscribe button so let's go to the uh, to the fourth one right so the fourth one is use transaction so what it does it helps manage state change in a way that keeps your app responsive especially during complex updates. yeah so think of it like this so imagine you are playing a video game and entering a new level it's like i mean um entering a new level yes it's like loading this the new level in the background while you continue to play so you don't experience a sudden lag or pause so this this simply means this use transition simply means that if you want to change something on your web page right and then you don't want it to uh so you don't want to you want to change it under the hook right in the background you don't want it to disturb what the user is currently doing the action that currently performing on your on your website you can easily use this use transaction so let me show us how this work so uh let's come here okay so here we have a kind of react form here right and then <clears throat> let me just show us what is, what is happening here let's go into the code base uh okay so here we have um okay we have the, this is the form which is a component right so we import this form inside our app here right is a child component and then what is happening inside this form is that we have this our undo submit here right our undo submit function here that is helping us to submit the form and then we import this use transaction here and then uh look at how we use the use transaction here we have is submitting and then we have start transaction okay so <clears throat> when i say start start transaction here what is really happening here is that uh we are saying that we are setting the timeout to 200 uh i mean to two seconds delay for submission right and then we are now saying that here let's say for example now you want to send this form data to an endpoint you are making that happen here in which this is not going to disturb any actions right being performed by a user on 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 your website so let's say i come here now let me type my name here let me say steven and then i just put in an email address here and click submit so it's going to wait you see it waits for like two seconds right so i can click okay once i click okay you can see i'm logging the values of this particular form i'm logging it here so that is how just use transaction works so if you come here and you over this you can even read more it said it allow components to avoid undesirable loading states by waiting for content to load before transitioning to the next screen you see it also allow component to defer slowly data fetching updates on the subsequent render so that more crucial updates can be rendered immediately so the use transition hooks returns two values in an array in which we've done here you see it's submitting and then we have start transaction here so you now say the first is boolean react way of informing us whether we are waiting for the transition to finish say so the second is a function that takes a call back you see so we use we can use it to tell react which states we want to differ so if some um that's okay say so if some state update causes the component to suspend that state update should be wrapped in a transaction so that's how it just works yes yeah, so we have this is submitting here yeah, which is a boolean it's going to be either true or false and then we have this start transaction which takes a callback function in which we are definitely doing inside our um this starts transaction here 
right so that is how it just works so it just helps you to make a changes right without overloading your web page so the last one we are going to be talking about is um the last one we're going to be talking about is use id so that is the last one i'm going to be talking about so what it does it generates unique id for elements ensuring their consistency and unique so which is important for accessibility and form handling so um think of it like this imagine you are at school events with hundreds of students and everyone gets a unique badge so use ids like giving each elements in your app a unique badge so that they can be easily identified and accessed so that's what use id just does it just helps to generate um, a unique id that we can use so let me just show you how this works here uh okay here so here we have these use id this id works so you import it the use id just the way you import your normal uh, books in react and then we uh, initiate this use ID right we set to this constant ID and then what happened is that so our ID here so we can it's you can use it for your to, to generate unique ID for your form right so here we say HTML for then we put the ID here and then the input feed as well you can generate unique ID uh, for it so this ID is going to be it's going to help your form right to have a unique id and then your html4 is going to i mean instead of you just using a kind of you know let's say you are building a project and then you have several inputs um you have se several input feed right instead of you racking your brain on the unique name to give them you can easily use this use id to generate a unique id and give your input uh feed just so not this is going to help you uh, to avoid uh, reusing the same uh, ID name you use for one input feed and you are using it for another input feed in which this could affect uh, you know uh, this could affect your your project or your code right it might not be able to uh, uh, I mean it's going to distort so it's going to affect your code base not optimized and perform the way it's supposed to so yeah I've been able to. Uh, I've been able to share with us um, five unpopular um, React hooks, right? So number one is I uh, let me just make a recap. So the number one we talk about is the use imperative undo. So and then we talk about use layout effects. So we also talk about um, use deferred value then use transition which is the fourth one and the last one is use id so guys if you really enjoyed this video so these are the react unpopular react hooks you can definitely use in your project to optimize your code to optimize your project right so if you really really enjoyed this video don't forget to drop your comment let me know what you think about this video if there is anything you think i might have ha i need to add or some of the explanation i made are not clear just let me know and don't forget to hit the like button if you love this video and hit the subscribe button as well thank you so much for taking your time to watch bye